Hi, I'm gonna show you guys how I made this dress for my senior ball. Okay, let's start with pictures of it to show you guys what it looks like and then inspo pics that I found on Pinterest that inspired this dress. And then we'll just get started. Okay, starting with materials, you're gonna need this stuff. Some of the important things to note here are probably that you need three yards of fabric per layer of the skirt. And then you can use the scraps to make lining for the bodice and everything else. And then for the foam for the boob cups, I actually had to buy like pre-made boob cups and then I cut up the foam. But if you just have foam, that might be better because mine was like uneven thickness. I also used hook and eyes to close the back, but you can close it any way you want. Like you could lace it up or add a zipper or something else too. Okay, step one is to make the pattern. So you, I guess you don't have to make the pattern. You could just buy the pattern, but I wanted to make mine for some reason. I literally learned how to use Illustrator just for this purpose. And I watched a bunch of YouTube tutorials and I'll link the ones that I use down below. And I think the pattern turned out pretty good, but I made a lot of adjustments to the boobs, even though I made a prototype to make sure it fit. But later on, I like had to redo the boob part a bit. Print it out to scale and then you just wanna cut it up. Also, you might notice at the top that there are timestamps. I just used this to like calculate how much time I spent on the entire project. And I think it took me around 42 and a half hours. Trace it onto paper, add seam allowance everywhere except for the top and the bottom edges and the cut part. So the point, the parts that I'm pointing to right now don't add seam allowance on those parts. And everywhere else, add. I added one centimeter. <laughs> okay, next I chose responsibility and I made a prototype of the bodice before actually um, committing to making it on the actual fabric. I just wanted to make sure it fit and everything and spoiler alert, it did. And then I just made adjustments when I made the actual thing anyway. But yeah, I'm just going to show you how to construct the top because you're going to have to do this for the actual thing anyway. One thing to keep in mind is how long you actually want the top to be. So I extended mine three inches from like the bottom of the boob, um, but I kind of wish I did three and a half. It depends on where you want it to want like the skirt and the top to hit on your body. And then put the pieces right side together, starting with the boob cup and just like sew along that seam and make sure you press the seams open so it's clean and stuff. And then just ex please enjoy this self-explanatory footage of me sewing it together. I don't really know why I did this, but I added like the decorative stitch along like each of the seams where you like sew two parallel lines. And you definitely don't need to do this, especially for the prototype. Like you need to do it on the real thing when you add like the boning channels and stuff. But I don't know, I guess I just wanted practice. And then I serge the cups um, to finish off those edges. You also kind of don't need to do that for the fit. Um, I guess I was just practicing because I have never really used a serger before. And then I top stitched the cups onto the other part and then I tried it on. 
Okay, I don't know how I got to be so big, but I feel like this part, the boob part, it, it fits it's my boob! Well, now we've established that it actually fits, so let's just make it now. Starting with the foam boob cups. Okay, don't add seam allowance. So use like the original pattern without the seam allowance and then just cut it out in the foam. <laughs> okay, so the length is not quite even. That's my bad on the pattern, but I'm probably just going to chop it off and then I'm going to zigzag stitch it and mark it in the middle to make sure it's even and then same with the other one. And then my phone is uneven, so I'm going to put the thicker parts in the middle and then once you sew it, it should be a dome. That's the setting I'm using for the zigzag stitch. And basically, you just want to zigzag zigzag stitch them together and you don't want to add seam allowance because like we're, we don't have like the seam So there's going to be a nude layer, four tool layers, and a lace layer. Okay, so I think right now I'm cutting out the nude layer. And you actually don't need to cut out the boobs for this unless you want the boobs to be nude. But I actually made the boobs black. I need four layers of each of the pieces, meaning I need eight of each of the pieces. I don't really know how to cut tool, so we'll see how this goes. Okay, after experimenting a little bit on how to cut out the tool pieces, I think the way to do it is to put... A pin underneath each of the pieces so that when you cut them out, the four layers stay together. Now I need to find the right parts of the lace to cut out, which is going to be rough. It took me a while to find the right placement of lace because I wanted like each panel to look nice. Um, but I would recommend putting like the pattern piece below the lace so that you can like see what exactly will be cut out. Okay, next you want to take the four layers of tulle and the one layer of lace for each of the panels and line them up and then you're just gonna do like a basing stitch around the whole perimeter. This is just to, like keep the pieces together. Okay, now I'm going to go through each of the pieces and trim them up because I feel like I want them to be like perfectly aligned. Okay, so now we're going to actually sew each of the pieces together, but instead of doing right sides together, we're going to do wrong sides together because we're going to put the bias tape over it as like the boning channel and then it'll cover up the seam anyway. So for the nude layer, we did right sides together, but for this lace layer, do wrong sides together. Okay, now just iron it, sew it, and make sure it fits-ish so far. And then next we're going to measure out the boning channels and trim the seam allowances so the boning channel, or like we're using bias tape, so when I say boning channel that's what I'm referring to. Um, Make sure that it covers the entire seam for both the nude and the black lace layer. I was looking at it after I was done and one of the panels was like kind of janky so I redid it. Um, I literally just like completely remade another one by cutting out like a new lace layer and like a new nude and stuff like that. And then it looked a lot better afterwards. Now I'm just serging like the closure part of the lining layer and then I'm gonna um, sew the two layers together or like the lace and the tool layers and then the nude layer by just going around the perimeter everywhere except for the bottom because the bottom's where we're gonna insert the boning. Now I'm just cutting out the length of each of the pieces of boning that I'll need, boning channels or like bias tape that I'll need and then also trimming the seam allowance just to make sure that it's like completely covered and then just sew along um, the edge uh, where I drew like these red lines and make sure that your boning actually fits in there and here's just a close-up of 
what it looks like after I'm done. I then took a break from the top to make the lining skirt because I needed to get the extra fabric from the lining skirt to make the boob cups for the top. So basically I made the lining skirt and then went back to the top. So for the skirt, we're making a half circle skirt. I just took my measurements, um, just like waist and how long I wanted it to be. And then make sure you like account for if you're wearing heels. And so I'm put my measurements into this half circle skirt calculator. Make sure on the half circle skirt se setting, um, unless you want to make like a different type of skirt. But yeah, so I put my waist and then I wanted my skirt to be 40 inches. So then it told me to cut out 48 and a half. So basically I just needed a piece, like a square that's at least 48 inches in width and length so that I could cut out that radius. Um, and then I cut it on fold. Okay, back to the bodice. So now we're dealing with the boob cups. So take out those foam pieces and we're basically gonna line them with black fabric. So we're gonna like make an encasing with that black lining fabric. I cut them out and I actually cut out an extra right boob, right half of the right boob. Actually, I think they're symmetrical, but whatever. Now we're going to make each of these. So we're going to connect these two right sides together and then right sides together with this. And then we're going to do that to all four. Once you sew them all together, um, just like iron them, press the seams. But it was kind of weird because my fabric is stretchy. And then... Um, you just want to make the casing. So put right sides together, sew around the perimeter, make sure your foam thing fits, and also leave an opening so that you can insert the foam and you can flip the casing that you made. Okay, next I just trimmed the foam things down so that they would look nice. And then this is what my boob cup looks like. And then I surged all around the edge to attach the lace um, part that we made before. Once the lace thing is attached, we can start adding the bias tape. And then I sewed those two parallel lines along the seam along the bias tape. And then I did that for both cups. I added the bias tape to the U portion and then I sewed along the red line. And then I'm gonna sew along the green line to top stitch the cup on. But before I did that, I just like pinned a few parts and tried it on. So this is what that looks like. Yeah, so after I tried it on, I think I realized the boobs were a little bit too big. So I wanted to take in the seam right underneath. And so I had to take it apart and then I sewed in about like one centimeter off the lining and off the lace portion, lace tool portion. And then I retried it on, and then I readjusted the placement and shape of the boob cup so that I just like the fit more. And then I pinned along where I wanted the new shape to be. So I traced out like a little pattern piece of the boob that I marked so that I could transfer it onto the other boob. And then I made sure that the boning channel placement was aligned just by like marking the lines. And then I just transferred it onto the other boobs so that they were symmetrical and marked it with pins. Okay, I'm gonna surge the boob cup. Okay, I really hope this doesn't fuck up because I'm cutting it. So 
After surging both of the boob cups and like cutting it down to the shape that I want, I tried it on. I just lined the part where the cup goes on to the bodice thing, and now we can top stitch it down. So this is what the stitching looks like when you look close up and it actually is looking pretty good. Okay, these look pretty even, but the top now looks a little uneven. So I'm gonna cut it into a circle. I'm just trimming out and rounding the top uh, to the shape that I want and then I'm gonna serge it again. Oh my god, and then when I was serging the top, I accidentally, so the serger um, like cuts some of the fabric and it like basically took out a chunk off the middle and hopefully I could just cover it with the bias tape but it was looking a little rough. Now I'm lining the top part with the bias tape to finish off the top edge. And then we're gonna add in the actual boning. So I'm gonna measure out each of the pieces. I'm only adding the vertical channels. I'm not adding like any in the boob cup or anything. And make sure you cut it one centimeter shorter um, for the bottom seam allowance because like you can't sew through the bonings. So just keep that in mind. And then I just trimmed those and then filed out the edges so that it doesn't like pierce through any of the um, fabric. Now, in order to finish the back edge, I surged it and then I stitched all of the layers together. And then I'm going to use the hook and eye tape. So I kind of played around with like how I wanted to place it, but I think I'm just gonna fold it in half and then top stitch it down. Yeah, so I pinned it here to show you how I'm gonna stitch it. I ended up stitching two lines and then I actually tried to put a piece of boning in and it worked. So I'm gonna put boning in there um, and hopefully to the other side as well. And then to finish off the top edge, I'm just gonna place the top bias tape over it and then fold it backwards and just stitch that down. I put boning in this one and a tiny zip tie in this one because it wouldn't fit. This is how it was looking with all the edges finished and oh my god, it looked so good. And the hook and eye, oh my god, what the heck? It like fits so perfectly. I was so impressed with myself. Yeah, so we're like basically done the top. The only thing we need to do is straps, but I'm gonna do that like near the end. And let's move on to making the skirt. So we already made the lining skirt, but we're gonna make the tool layers now. So what we're gonna do is put the lining skirt on fold and put it underneath the tool so that you can kind of get a guide and then you're going to be cutting out the same shape so like uh, you can just use that as like a template and then just cut out the shape of the lining skirt and then I added a few in extra inches on the bottom because I wanted the tool to be a little bit longer than the lining skirt um, but I kind of just like eyeballed that part and then another tip I have is tool is like really slippery and so was my lining skirt. So just pin those together and make sure everything's like straightened out really well. Also another tip is if you want to use like the optimal amount of fabric, um, we are cutting out four half circle skirts. So let me show you what I did. If you cut it out like this, it's not the most efficient way, uh, but like we're cutting it on fold, keep in mind. So I was trying to cut it out like, or I did cut it out like this in order to like save material. So if you guys want to try that too, go ahead. But it gets a little confusing because like you have to fold it at the right part. So like this is 48.5 inches for me. And then you have to like fold it such that this right here fits the constraints of wherever you just cut out here but i think it's like it's not too bad if you just like adjust as you go okay 
yay so now we can attach all the layers so i have the lining and then the four layers of tulle and i'm just like i just tried it on really quickly just to like make sure that the length was right and stuff but then i just quickly like did a straight stitch across just to connect all the layers Oh, okay, so I while I tried to record but my phone ran out of storage. Yeah, so I was trying to visualize what a slit would look like um, This is not an actual slit. It's just like the opening because we haven't actually like connected each part together yet um, That'll come later Okay, next we're gonna iron everything because my tool was super wrinkly Ironed, not ironed And then I'm just gonna like trim off um, any of like the excess or like any inconsistencies Okay, we're also going to make a facing, which is just going to, like, help us finish off the waist part. And I'm going to make it, like, I think around three or four inches long. I'm just using the waist from the lining skirt that we cut out as a guide. And then I'm just, like, marking four inches along everywhere. And then I'm just going to cut that out. Okay, so this is the waist. Do here. So here. And then we can turn it. So I surged the facing on, and then I also did another straight stitch. And then I'm going to understitch the lining to the seam allowance, just so that it doesn't like flip over. Lol, my serge is literally like green and really messy, but I surged it and I understitched it, and this is what the facing looks like now. And then I tried it on. We still haven't connected the actual skirt together yet, so that's why it looks like there's a slip. <laughs> So I'm just combining each of the skirt layers and then a little gap up here for the zipper and then I'm just going to sew down and I'm going to do that for all four of the tool layers and I already did it for the lining. The tool is so messy. But basically I put in the zipper and then there's like a hole in all the layers of tool, in each layer of tool. I'm now just pinning the skirt onto the top and I'm pinning it um, based on like the end points and the midpoint and then making sure it's like all aligned. Yeet, it's a dress now. Okay, I put the leg slit on the right side, but I think most dresses have it on the left side, but I kind of like mine on the right side anyway. But yeah, I just pinned where I thought it should be and then I just cut a line and then I tried it on. I think I want to make it a little wider so I'm gonna cut like a pizza slice. Like maybe like two inches or something. I don't know if I should cut the tool too. I feel like I probably should. Okay so I just laid out the tool too and I'm gonna cut the tool now. And then it definitely needed to be like thicker and higher so then I just kind of kept adjusting, and I like kept adjusting. It like took me a minute, um, and I just kept trying it on and adjusting. Um, I didn't really cut off any of the tool, but I did cut slices of the lining skirt off, so like a pizza slice. two types of straps I was considering so I was considering just using like that bias tape that we were using or making like a tool strap and I like the tool strap more so let's say this was my shoulder I wanted the tool to kind of splay like that so to get that effect I just cut out like a tapered piece of tool that was the length that I wanted which was 18 inches and then I cut out two of them and then I just like stood in front of a mirror and just adjusted and pinned until I liked how it looked. And then, yeah, I just sewed it down. We're almost done. Okay, I'm just trimming each layer a little bit because the lining was like a little bit too long. I trimmed it like like one to two centimeters and then I trimmed each of the um, tool layers so that they were kind of even and like the front should have been like a little bit shorter than the back. And then we're done. Okay, thanks for watching. I think it turned out pretty good and um, I think I'm just gonna like take off the skirt afterwards and just wear the top as a top because I think the top is cute. And I hope you learned something. Bye!